Hi, I'm Steve Spiker, uh, IBM Rational, here to talk to you today about uh, getting started with uh, your OSLC implementation. Uh, for those who don't know, it, OSLC stands for Open Services for Lifecycle Collaboration. You can learn more by going to open-services.net. So today I'm going to talk about how you get started with your integration, some key things to think about when you're uh, trying to plan for your, your implementation, uh, connecting tools together. So first, <clears throat> we'll break down well, what do we need to do to get started? So the first thing we need to do is think about what scenario we want to support. Scenario means uh, both uh, the scope of what you're trying to accomplish and what tools are involved in accomplishing that. So in this example, my tool is I'm going to pick a Rational Team Concert, which already has built-in support for OSLC, a uh, number of uh, specifications, but primarily going to be talking about the change management to a, version of the specification today. Uh, and also taking, uh, we're going to be talking about how we can integrate with another tool we have, an open source tool, uh, Bugzilla. Uh, they have different structures, different ways of looking at things. And so the primary scenario we're going to say is we're going to link, let's say, a, a task in RTC to a bug in Bugzilla. So it's a simple link, a change request, the change request scenario. And we already know the tool configuration in RTC and Bugzilla are our target tools. Of course, the next thing would be, well, if they both support a standard interface for connecting to one another, your work's done. Uh, uh, today, Bugzilla doesn't have built-in support for OSLC, so we'll use it as an example for building in that support. So, say, what? Support it in the tools. RTC, OSLC, so check mark there. But Zilla, we have a couple different options there. We have a Java API that we're going to use, and we'll have to build an OSLC adapter. And that'll be sort of the focus of what we'll talk about here of how do we get this link to exist? So we start from a rational team concert project. Within that project, we have already selected a task. We know we want to associate it with some bug somewhere in some uh, Bugzilla server. So in order to achieve this integration, we need to break this down a little bit. So first we need to take a look at well, we have this RTC server that we want to connect to some other server. So first we need to establish some type of friend or trust relationship. So that's one thing we need to do. Once we get to that point, we'll know we're working within a certain project, uh, and a project is a container for a various task. Uh, what type of container thing do I want to connect to or associate with within the Bugzilla context? And for this scenario, we'll say, well, Bugzilla has a grouping of products among different ways it can do things. So we'll say we want to connect project A, we'll so call it here product one. So that'll be the second step. And then once we do that, then we can, within our project, we scope down to what task we're looking for, look for what uh, bug we want to connect to, or create even within the Bugzilla system. So that will be our third step in, in order to reach the end goal of having that link. And once you get here, there'll be some additional capabilities that you can have by having that relationship there that's OSLC based. So one, we need a, a couple things in order to, to register the Bugzilla server with the RTC server, we'll need to uh, utilize a, a, an integration uh, piece that uh, is needed just for RTC. Um, in a root services document. And this is just what the, the RTC server needs to, to understand about uh, the capabilities of the other system it's connecting to. And part of that, it also need to have support for OAuth 1.0. So that means this Bugzilla server will need to be an OAuth 1.0 provider uh, and must highlight this that um, there's a lot of good tools available 
in, in order to aid you in providing that support. Um, you can go to OAuth.org to get that information. And I also want to underscore this is one of those uh, areas where it takes uh, a, some work involved to get to it. So it's one of the bigger areas when doing the integration. And then on top of that, all the various service description documents we have in OSLC. So there's a service provider catalog. I'll just give them the acronyms here. And a service provider. And these are just documents, and we'll talk as we go, that add, that describe the capability that we have in our Bugzilla system. They're used uh, lightly in step one, but more in step two. So they're, they're pretty simple definitions of how uh, the descriptions are there, and so you can, you can easily create these by defining static uh, RDF XML files with the content in it, or uh, stepping up to using our true RDF library to generate those responses. Uh, one takes a very small amount of time, the other one takes a little amount of time. So uh, those are two very easy steps in the process. So I'll kind of blend step two in here with that. <laughs> Once we do step two and we're looking at what we're going to get to in step three is uh, we want to describe some of our services, but we haven't really developed any services yet. So uh, with this we have sort of a, a say a placeholder, a skeleton or some stub for what we're going to put in later. So uh, then when we get down to uh, Let's say step two or three, where two, we've now linked the projects together. They understand one another. Uh, step three is now going to be adding some capabilities in for uh, the ability for delegated uh, bug selection uh, using delegated UIs uh, or using creation dialogues if you want to take that additional step. So in three, we have the need to support the delegated UIs. So this is, especially in the case of uh, a Bugzilla, since uh, our approach here is by using a Java API to sit in between Bugzilla and the outside world as far as uh, OSLC request, it's going to have to rebuild some of the dialogues that is, exist in Bugzilla. In typical tools, they already have the notion of selection and creation dialogues. And in order to make them OSLC compliant, you just need to add a few things onto them so that it can uh, receive uh, some information so it can properly display the dialogue. Uh, also, some information once the dialogue has completed its task, it can generate messages back to the listener to know that uh, what uh, item was picked or created and a, a label to use to, to, to display with that link. So it's either, in our case, it's it will build some simple dialogues here, uh, both creation and selection. So that step, as we go through this, means that, hey, well, great, once we uh, go through the process, I've, I've picked my bug, I say I want to link this bug, uh, to some other, um, or link my task to some bug in Bugzilla, I can ask for a dialogue to help me find that bug. And this will present that dialogue and you'll be able to, to pick it. Once that's selected, uh, there's a couple things there that uh, you can do to add additional capability. <clears throat> One is to be able to have support for link, placing the link from the bug uh, to, the, to the task. So, uh, providing a, a link in the bug. In order to do this, we have to support the ability to update the bug using the HTTP put method. So this is the, the standard way within REST style um, interfaces to update resources. So this is, after all this we've gone through, there's some simple, you know, get support here we've done, uh, some simple uh, web UI needs, and then a way to put a link in, in this bug to this task using a, a put. So one of the next ones that's probably the most used initially is what we call a UI preview. 
Uh, and this defines a small snippet or view of this bug over here in the RTC user interface. So after I select the bug, the bugs in the work item editor, I mouse over and I, a request goes to the Bugzilla provider asking for the UI preview. Um, it, that only has to return a almost a static definition of what uh, web pages that go to are small HTML fragments to, to display, including a label and an icon. And once you get that back, you just display information about that bug. So very simple. So those are things. Now I can UI, I can get a preview of the, the bug here. I can see over there. The other things that are highly recommended are the ability to Git or other presentation formats. So supporting Git on RDF, XML, and another one with a funny name, not used to it, Turtle, uh, which is a, a simplified text format of RDF. So this means if some other client or even an RTC system wants to fetch information about bug three here, it can ask for it as using the, the content type RDF XML or Turtle and get back a full description of that. And in turn, it can go around and turn back and update the bug using that information. So all in all, um, that's a, a quick run through of the steps needed to get started by just linking to a bug, getting some preview information, getting some information on the details of the bug itself and updating it. And one thing I would recommend as well, as you go through even the steps of service discovery, is do things incrementally. I talked previously about how you could either do something statically defined, real simple, and have canned responses come back. I mean, that's fine to get something going through the process, learn more about how everything works. Uh, don't worry about how your lay, what your layout is of your delegated UIs or your UI preview. Get something going simple first would be a good idea. Um, even to the point of stubbing out some of the OAuth support and then going back through and uh, uh, iterating over it and doing the, the right thing so you can see some good progress early on. The other recommendation I would have is um, not just getting started and, and using it in general is the test with say greater than one what's it called, service provider. So instead of, uh, or one, even uh, another client. So in this case, we're only testing it with RTC hitting our service provider. So if we were to communicate either way, uh, <coughs> we haven't talked about making Bugzilla a consumer of OSLC. Uh, in this case, it only is a, is a provider of the OSLC services. So it's only receiving a request. But I would recommend selecting, uh, getting another tool, a uh, rational quality manager would be a good one to test. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, look at some of the reference implementation work that's going on in some of the open source and the Eclipse Leo project, um, but Leo being L-Y-O. <clears throat> and also there's some test suites in there that you can point, if you're feeling brave, point the test suite towards your implementation and, and, and use that as well. So that's in the uh, Eclipse uh, Leo project. Uh, so with that, that gives us uh, an idea of how to get started, um, a few other steps to, to help test and validate our, our implementation, a quick uh, run through of the steps needed to have a simple scenario supported here with linking change request from a uh, rational team concert system over to a Bugzilla system, uh, which has bugs in it and its own change request, uh, using the OSLC uh, change management version two interface uh, to provide that integration. Uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, look for more information at open-services.net to help you with your implementations.